Hello everyone, Kenty Tiger here with Bengali Engineering and Play. We are back in No Man's Sky and uh, I wanted to do, uh, well, I'm continuing play, but I'm wanting to actually kind of demonstrate um, the frigate repair. So uh, I've just bounced back to my third, um, uh, let, me, let me take a step back. So frigates are kind of a new implementation. I don't know how new because the last time I played it was Atlas. Uh, so Atlas Rising was the last version that I played. I think there were two semi-majors in between. Uh, not sure about that, but I, I think... Uh, so I thought Atlas was 1.3 and the next uh, NEXT, is, I don't know if that's an acronym or something else, uh, is 1.5. So I think this is the second upgrade. Uh, since I played last. So, um, effectively, when you own your freighter, uh, and apparently there is a way that you can actually, if a freighter is under attack, then uh, you fight off the attackers, space pirates, whatever they happen to be, and then you go on and talk to the captain, and he will actually give you the freighter. So, it's a good way to save. Um, I think Obviously, there's a lot of variance uh, as to how much the freighters cost. It's really dependent upon uh, how big they are, uh, all that sort of thing. Obviously, a freighter has a lot of, of cargo space. Uh, you can trade up at any time. It just costs you some money, uh, a lot of money. Uh, so when I first bought this freighter, uh, it was uh, $22 million. So you do have to save up a bit. Uh, I think for a freighter, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, over the course of time, you gain frigates. And basically, you can fly into any freighter fleet in any uh, system that you warp into. Um, and those fleets will have frigates uh, attached to them. And there'll be a little icon up on the screen of uh, recruitable frigate, recruitable frigate. And it's going to have the little uh, starship uh, emblem on it. And on my screen, they're kind of a greenish uh, color. Um, so that indicates that you can go and talk to them and hire. Um, now... The whole purpose of this uh, to, to buy the frigates is basically you put together a, fl a fleet. Um, you can have up to 30 frigates, up to 30 frigates. Um, can't have any more than that. Uh, you can send your frigates onto expeditions. And the neat thing about expeditions is they will get you... Um, things of monetary value, whether they just be units... Uh, they might come back with a vortex cube. They might come back with some pretty fantastic things that you can in turn sell for money uh, for regular units. Uh, and then some of the other expeditions like the trade expeditions or that sort of thing, they really are just about units. Um, so my typical, um, I've done uh, four or five uh, expeditions, I guess they're calling them. Um, I've done about four or five of those, and they come back with anywhere from 170, 180,000 units uh, and gibberish um, to almost 300,000 uh, units and gibberish. So it is fairly lucrative. You actually don't have to do a damn thing. Um, you can go on adventuring, come back to uh, your command terminal at any time, uh, and we'll try and demonstrate some of that. So uh, I do have to say one thing. I have edited the seed of my freighter. Um, the Resurgent class, uh, and they call it a Star Destroyer. I'm, I, I think that's a throwback into Star Wars, so if you, if you like that sort of thing. Uh, it is kind of Star Destroyer-ish looking. So uh, if you remember the Imperial Star Destroyers from, uh, from Star Wars, then this particular freighter will look... Uh, uh, very familiar to you. So, uh, at least parts of it. Um, so, once we get to that point, uh, I'm going to actually fly to my freighter. I need to look around. Um, and we'll see uh, We'll see what that looks like. So, uh, I did that in another video. 
uh, but I'll go ahead and kind of revisit that a little bit here just from a, from a broad perspective. So uh, frigates. Um, the only way for frigates to upgrade is for them to just go on more and more expeditions. So I suggest that when you're doing frigates, and I know this is a lot of babble with absolutely nothing happening on the screen, and, and I do apologize for that. I, I tend to just get rolling and, and then blah. And uh, um, so when you send out your groups, you can send them out up to five ships in a group. Uh, if one of them is damaged, uh, then you can actually monitor what's happening in the particular command uh, room that is effectively assigned to that expedition. And they will let you know uh, we have sustained critical damage. Do you want us to continue on or do you want to recall? Uh, obviously, if you recall, you're going to leave that expedition one ship short. But uh, so far, even with a lot of damage, this particular ship, I think, has four uh, damage. Um, then they will make it back to you, uh, which is really to say they will rendezvous uh, with your freighter and then you can travel uh, from wherever you happen to be to that vessel. Uh, that ves all the vessels, all the frigates actually have landing pads, whether it be two or three uh, or five or six. Uh, uh, they, they all have landing pads. So you basically, you have a big red icon uh, with that particular vessel so you know where you're going. That red icon is actually above the landing pad. Uh, so you come in on the landing pad. Um, they've made some changes since I saw it last. So the landing pad now has um, kind of a, a circular um, a hologram coming up out of it. That's it's a uh, you know one a small circle, uh, then a little bigger circle, a little higher up, a little bigger circle, a little higher up. So it's it's a graphic uh, display, so you can see where the recommended landing pad. There's also uh, holographic arrows. Uh, coming up from it or down to it. I don't remember which we'll find that out um, And of course they start out with a, a blue color which which says you're incoming uh, like any landing pad in the game now uh, you kind of aim for it and When you are probably about a hundred meters or so out that's going to change everything changes to green uh, Pressure land button, whatever that happens to be on. I'm, I'm using a controller, so it's my X button. Um, and your ship will then auto land. Uh, so you don't have to guide it in. You just point your nose to it when it turns green, punch your land button, boom, auto land, and you're down. So uh, makes for some interesting things. So uh, in this case, I've uh, I floated around. Uh, let me go ahead and exit and I'll come back. Um, so this is my fleet. Let's go, let's go ahead. Whoa. Okay. That's not what I wanted to do, but okay. So, um, this is my fleet here. Uh, so you can see an awful lot. You don't see any damage currently because when you're on a ship, uh, you don't get to see the damage. So this is uh, a good portion of my fleet. Um, you can't really, unfortunately, so the two red icons there, the little uh, vessel icons, are uh, damage components and they tell you approximately where they are um, so I have fixed one already on this ship uh, so obviously I have quite a bit more to go uh, oh okay those are those are my uh, my orbit indicators the uh, the direction indicators so they are just the two uh, well it says damage station is four so I do have three more on this ship somewhere uh, anyway, you can't really see it, but, but this down here is, uh, is my destroyer. Oh, sorry, yeah, my destroyer. Uh-huh. Uh, this is my, uh, uh, frigate. I can't, I can't even say that. Uh, freighter, the other FR, uh, freighter. So you can see the nose of it, uh, up yonder here, uh, which is almost center screen now. Uh, if you look at the icon for my ship uh, and follow that straight out, that's the nose of my freighter. I can I can actually say that word freighter. Uh, having trouble here. Um, so one of the things that I would like to do is find this class. This is called the Resurgent Class Star Destroyer Capital Freighter. That's a that's a mouthful. That's what it is. Um, 
There are, uh, for those of you who get into uh, altering uh, game things uh, in the configurations, um, you can actually update your uh, freighter seed fairly easily if you've ever done you know editing of configuration files and that sort of thing then then it's it's really not that hard there's a lot of uh, uh, there's there's a lot of descriptions very good quality descriptions for how to do that out on the internet uh, the gaming community really does supply a lot of good information the other thing is no man's sky actually has um, not from hello games but out there also on the uh, the internet um, in fact, No Man's Sky Mods, uh, I highly recommend that site. Uh, if you like mods, um, No Man's Sky Mods, uh, No Man's Sky Mods.com, I guess I should say that correctly, uh, all the way out to the URL. So um, there is a save game editor. Uh, it is Java based, so you do have to have uh, Java 8, I believe it's based on. So you do have to have a version of Java 8 uh, to make it work. Uh, and it actually does allow you to change, I, I want to say, probably about 95% of things in the game. So if you're into that sort of thing, then that gives you a magnificent tool on how to do that. So uh, you follow the icons, it will ultimately lead you to an access panel. Now that I've babbled for, uh, for 11 minutes, uh, then we're actually into what I intended to do. So in this case, uh, it shows you uh, X button for me, I'm, I'm using a standard, uh, not standard, uh, I use a, an Anka, let me, let me look, uh, Razer Onza, O-N-Z-A Tournament, uh, uh, Xbox 360 controller, so it is a wired controller, but you can use it on PC. Now, normally when you plug it in to Windows 7 or above, uh, it's going to recognize what that is and boom it's active sometimes uh, it will go uh, default inactive and you have to go back in and turn it on and again there's there's information on the website on how to do that so I have found no man's sky actually works uh, very very well with a controller um, in fact 90 percent of what I do in the game is with the controller uh, obviously there are keyboard commands you can use the keyboard and uh, controller simultaneously no problem uh, and I have found actually the galactic map uh, section of the game uh, when you're warping from uh, from system to system actually is much more effective using keyboard commands I get totally confused trying to use the controller because I don't know what the maps are and I just end up getting frustrated and, and uh, anyway so reverting uh, so X will bring you up to the access panel. It will tell you what's wrong. Um, so for those of you who are medium game, mid game, and beyond, this is not going to be a surprise to you. Platinum, we need platinum to do this. Uh, now it does say zero to zero here uh, because I have a cheat enabled uh, that, uh, that actually turns off costs. Um, and, uh, but, uh, having said that, let me go into my inventory. I do have, that's not the inventory. Uh, I do have a lot of stuff in my cargo inventory. So you see platinum over here, platinum, platinum, platinum. So I do have gold, silver, platinum, all that sort of thing. And you need gold, silver, platinum, um, gold, silver, platinum, tritium, Yeah, you need the upper end space metals. Um, so gold, silver, platinum, tritium are, are the typical ones that you need uh, to fix up your fleet. Uh, so as you can see here, when I hover over this, it comes up with platinum. So I need to have at least a certain amount of platinum. Uh, a for repair, which then repairs. And then I move on to the next, which is down. So uh, ladders here, so you enter in, it flips you around automatically, and then it's the, uh, in my case, is the down on the stick, back on the stick, towards you on the stick, however you want to look at it, uh, to climb down the ladder. Once I reach the platform here, then hopefully I will have an unst- oh, that was not where I wanted to go. Uh, so I need to orbit, uh, so I've got an icon there, 
which hopefully will be inside this compartment. Uh, I've had trouble getting in, so you have to kind of do your uh, jetpack there for a half a second. All of these seem to be a little bit bugged coming through the door. So, uh, airlock control unit, once again an X, uh, and it's going to tell you what's wrong. A tiny motor in this case, and once again we need platinum to repair. And then uh, once the airlock door closes, I'm not exactly sure what this unit here is. Uh, B for return, and then, uh, so I, I know they're on this side of the ship, 122 units, which I translate in my head to meters. Uh, even though uh, I'm US, so I probably should be translating to yards, but I, I'm a little more worldly. So I translate, uh, I can I can translate in my head over to meters. So uh, here's the landing pads uh, with my ship down here. Uh, so most of the frigates have either side mounted or top mounted landing pads. Uh, in this case, there are four. There's two on the uh, I'm presuming this is the port side, and then two more on the starboard side. You can't really, I mean, you can choose what, what frigates you have, and I, I did, oh, they're both right here. Um, so uh, when you're selecting, you can ultimately, uh, more platinum. Hey. Um, so platinum, gold, silver, and tritium. Tritium uh, you're gonna find quite a bit of when you're roaming around in space. Uh, damn, wrong button, I'm sorry. Um, Transmission, tritium, here we go, tritium. Um, so, uh, when you're cruising through asteroid fields, uh, you're gonna have a lot of these precious metals. So, uh, the good news is, uh, I have, uh, I have completed uh, the repairs on this frigate. Uh, I think that actually came up on the screen and I missed it. Uh, so one of the things you can see, uh, everything disappeared off of my my orbit bar there. Uh, so the only thing is I have to go to uh, to this planet, uh, ancient ruin over here. Um, okay, so we are headed back to our vessel. I still have either two or three frigates. So once I launch here, so launch, uh, cruise away, you can see, uh, so I'm orbiting around here to make it up to uh, the next frigate. Uh, obviously you don't wanna crash into your frigates. So what I'm gonna do is up over the top and then uh, line up so it's blue. Uh, so the arrows are going down. So I'm waiting for these arrows to change green, which they have. X uh, will come down. Uh, the captain is uh, obviously a little bit frantic, probably a little embarrassed that he had some trouble and his crew couldn't fix it. So they're sending me the owner uh, to fix all his damage, which probably is a little embarrassing for a captain. So inspect damage report and uh, blah, 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 internal. They're gonna come up with something a little bit about this, mark damage com components. I would always recommend that you do that, uh, which makes your job a little easier for finding things. And then uh, we exit the ship. Now, uh, strangely enough, I didn't see the, uh, uh, so this one says damage stations, three. Uh, so then it's just a matter of finding those stations. Uh, finding a way down may be a little bit of a challenge. So one of them is forward uh, for me, uh, now on my right side. So the trick is really finding where those are, and it looks like uh, somewhere right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go down this ladder over here because I don't seem to have any other option figure out approximately where I need to go. Uh, I see a bulkhead door here. Uh, uh, destination for you. So I, it's, once you, once you, oh, here's this, this little bug again. There we go. Get to the 
the center. Um, the other one is directly on the other side, so I'm on the good platform here. Uh, and you can actually hear these these thudding and trying to go. So airlock control, um, solenoid, uh, which takes silver and ferrite dust, both of which I have in my inventory. Obviously, when you're roaming around the ships, you want to take a couple stacks each of all of these uh, basic things and, uh, and not the silver is basic but the ferrite dust you can get anywhere silver you're going to have to find when you're roaming around in space you don't have to refine it just keep it um, so of course I'm middle game so uh, and then you'll see it actually function, Oops, function and the door closes uh, so we're gonna go out I think I'm on the correct level so we're gonna go straight across if we can uh, and see so going out seems to be fine uh, so we go down underneath uh, this uh, conduit, whatever that is, conduit tray, and I think I can come in on this side, uh, and yeah, it looks like there's another one there. So um, sometimes you have to wander around a little bit to figure out where they are. It is a little bit tedious to, uh, to go to all your different frigates, especially if you end up with six or seven frigates that are damaged. Uh, so transmission, tritium. So tritium, we have to have tritium in our inventory. Uh, I highly recommend that you develop your uh, your exosuit fully, uh, which is 48, 48, 48. Um, by that time, it will have cost you probably several hundred million in gold uh, to get it that far and an awful lot of game time to get it that far. Uh, did I have a ladder over? No ladder over here. Uh, so we have one more something back aft. Uh, so we're going to have to figure out where that is. So the only way to go uh, aft is to climb back up the ladder. Now I, I have found out if you have a... That's not what I wanted. Uh, climb ladder. There we go. Uh, so hopefully this is direction aft, yes, so the, should be up this ramp, yes, indeed, uh, which is some kind of cargo pod issue. All right, repair uh, pressure chamber, which I need silver, and then it is working once again. All right. Um, okay, and it shifted over to the next. Uh, so at this point, uh, I just have to get back to my vessel, um, which is up there on the landing pad. So I'm looking for the up ramp, which happens to be right here. Thankfully, and I think this was the last frigate. So uh, the only other thing I want to do, and I've already done this in a couple of the other videos, was, uh, was see um, uh, what the base looks like. And I, I may actually do some changes on that um, because uh, I changed or attempted to change a seed. So uh, launch. Uh, I am not getting any more icons for damage, so I'm going to go down slightly. Now, we're in the upper atmosphere of this planet, which is why you see the shaking here on the screen. Um, so, let me, uh, look around. Um, so this is the front of my freighter. Um, increase uh, velocity just a little bit here so you can see everything. Uh, and being in the upper atmosphere, you see a lot of the shield stuff in effect here. Uh, at least I'm presuming that's kind of the, uh, the shield looking thing. So uh, roaming around, you can see all the various uh, features of this particular class, the resurgent class again. Um, and of course I have to orbit around and be careful not to hit uh, any of the frigates that are uh, in orbit right now with, with the ship. Um, now, um, kind of as a, as a semi-final note here, um, so you can see the, the frigate fleet here. 
Um, a lot of different classes of frigates, and I haven't really studied these to see what the different ones are. Uh, one of the things that I had mentioned was that you want to um, you, you want to uh, plan out your expeditions reasonably well. So my concept, uh, and this is probably my military experience uh, coming into play, is um, this is auto dock by the way. Um, so all you have to do is fly into the kind of tube. That, uh, that this thing gives you, and then you will end up in the auto docks. Um, so, intelligent planning. Um, out. Uh, there we go. Restart point, point saved. Um, uh, again, intelligent planning in your maneuvers. I always send at least. So uh, let me let me review. I, I know some of you already know this, but but let me review a little bit. Um, there are five classes of freighter, uh, and and what I mean by classes is is probably more accurately expressed as five types. Excuse me, of frigates. I it's the other F R word, the other fur word. Um, frigate, frigate. We're talking about frigates. Uh, there are five types. Of frigates. Now these are general types. Um, so you have your industrial, which are mostly focused on mining. You have exploring, which are, as the name would indicate, mostly focused on exploring. Trade is traders, so you're going to make money on those expeditions. Uh, then you have your combatant class, combat class, uh, and your support class. Now I'm not really sure exactly what the support folks do. I presume that the support folks help to repair and that sort of thing, supply, uh, you know, provide fuel, that sort of thing. So kind of a supply repair kind of a ship, I'm, I'm presuming. Uh, I, I know there's probably some really good descriptions on what all these different classes do. So your main workforce, of course, are your traders, your explorers, or your industrial miner ships. So the, uh, the expeditions are designed around that. So what I do, five ships in an expeditionary fleet. Uh, so my concept, based on my naval experience, is I have a combatant and a supply ship in every fleet. Okay, so that just makes sense to me. You want to have at least some protection there and some supply support of some kind. I don't know exactly what the function is, but that just seems logical to me that you would have that class of ship, in, sorry, that type of ship in every uh, expedition. And then if it's a trade uh, expedition, then I would have uh, three trade vessels. If I were to have um, a mining expedition, then I would have three industrial vessels. So it's three, and then the one combatant, and the one supply. So to me, that makes sense. So when you're designing your fleet, um, I highly recommend uh, that you that you put things together that way. And and the numbers I came up with. So given thirty ships. Um, there's a little bit of variant there, but you can only run five expeditions at a time, uh, which is really to say um, there are five expeditions that show up in the navigator's list that once you've done them all, they will reset, and then you get five, and they're basically the same five. Uh, you know, different places, different lengths, different difficulty levels, but ultimately um, they, they, there's five screen so if you fully populate all of those you're gonna end up with five on your screen at any given time so effectively you can f run five independent uh, expeditions simultaneously and they're of course going to be variable lengths um, they are X number of hours and those are game hours so obviously if you save your game and close your game they're still out there uh, and they will pause when you pause. So if you're not playing, they're not playing, kind of a thing. So it doesn't 
the clock keeps going like on uh, an independent server nope doesn't work that way um, so uh, anyway what I recommend five expeditions uh, keep them all going non-stop uh, you'll obviously have some ships to repair as they go it's random as far as I can tell it's random so you have to have the, and and this is the the world according to to, uh, to Kenti here um, five combat ships and five support craft okay so you you want one of each of those in every uh, expedition uh, my numbers here say trade I want six ships explorers I want six ships and industrials I want eight now why did I choose eight why two more uh, so six plus six is twelve plus ten which are your combat and support ships make twenty two which means what's left eight so industrial got the eight because you can always send an industrial ship uh, with another expedition so my concept here is I could run two trade missions two exploration missions simultaneously uh, given my combat and support craft which are going to go with everyone and then a broad variety so really I could run seven seven and seven so seven times three is so I'd be less one uh, so seven seven and six um, because you have a, a general uh, a balanced they call it a balanced expedition and are you going to be trading are you going to be exploring are you going to be industrial so probably a six trade seven explore and seven industrial would actually be ideal because then you could have um, for the general uh, you could have an exploration ship, an industrial ship, uh, and a combat and support, and that would be that expedition. Um, and then you'd have two and two of your of your others. Uh, so, anyway, uh, that's what it was looking like. Uh, so I would recommend you be very judicious in selecting. When you fly up to your freighter, it's going to be hard to see what it is. So obviously there, there are different designs that you see graphics wise is what I'm talking about. And you walk up, uh, you'll, uh, you'll be able to initiate contact when you get close, the captain will reach out and talk to you. Uh, you respond, uh, in my case, it's the down uh, D-pad button for me, and then A key, which will answer the, uh, the hail, and then you interact. And when you go into the negotiate, you'll see not only the price, but you will see the type and class available. The only way to increase class, they're the, the frigates are the only ships in the game that upgrade themselves over time. And what I mean by upgrade is they will actually change class. So I don't know how the class levels work, uh, but a, a supposedly C is the bottom of the barrel. So that's your entry level uh, class, which you're going to get for anywhere from 1.5 million to 1.7 million. So very inexperienced crew, blah, 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 that sort of thing. Um, then it goes to, I believe it's the A, then the B, then the S, as in Sierra. Um, so Charlie class first, uh, Alpha class, Beta class, uh, and then uh, Sierra, S. So S is the highest of the classes which is going to be a very experienced group. So how do you gain experience with the frigates and have them uh, quote unquote level up? Uh, that's send them out on expeditions. So send them out, let them do their thing, they come back and eventually uh, there's in fact a percentage thing on the screen at all times that tells you uh, what their experience level is, how long it takes before they quote unquote level up. So uh, anyway, having said all this, uh, this is the up. We're going to go in, and I, I really just kind of want to demonstrate um, how to get into the expedition uh, side of things. And I can't drive. So uh, in this case, um, I, I've built a few things, uh, and I did kind of demonstrate what that looked like in the other one. Uh, so this is your up ladder. Uh, forward, conveniently, is where the bridge is. Uh, in this case, I have an admiral who is overall in command of 
the fleet. Uh, the Admiral is taking directions from me, even though I don't really interact with that. So, just use your imagination. Uh, the uh, former commander of this vessel uh, taking uh, taking commands from me. The navigator here, uh, which you'll find uh, sitting next to the uh, the big globe thing here, navigator, uh, which is where you plan and dispatch expeditions. Uh, so I'm going to go through this. Uh, ah, a traveler entity, Corvax is pleased to report exciting navigational research. Corvax has plotted new expeditions for your fleet. So uh, we have the decline, which is basically an exit, and view potential. So you go into view potential, and uh, as you can see here, all of these are active uh, for me. Um, and uh, most of them are not active from the perspective of um, Uh, what what I what I mean by that is they're all active, but they're done. So what I need to do is go back to my command consoles uh, and actually debrief, and then these will change uh, once again uh, back over to being active. So uh, they have an icon uh, that tells you approximately what is going on. Uh, so there's two trade expeditions in this case, one industrial expedition and a voyage of discovery, which is uh, to go through those uh, discovery, exploration, right? Exploration. Uh, industrial, mining. So exploration is going to bring you interesting things like Corvax cubes or, sorry, not Corvax cubes. Um, uh, well, yeah, Corvax cubes, now that I think about it. I was thinking vortex cube in my mind and couldn't say vortex for some reason. Uh, so vortex cubes, you know, interesting items that actually can yield you uh, a little bit of money if you want that sort of thing. So you can sell them, uh, galactic trade. Um, so uh, anyway, industrial expedition, what's that going to do for you? Effectively, uh, it's going to put money in your pocket. That's, that's what that is. So that's units and that sort of thing. Um, industrial expedition, which is mining, basically. Uh, so that translates into units in your pocket. Trade expedition could be anything. So a lot of money there, a lot of items there. So in this case, we have a fully uh, expedition, uh, an exploratory expedition there. Uh, so going from the top down, exploratory, explorers. So that would be three exploration ships, in, in my view of the world, three expo uh, exploration ships, uh, my combatant and, and my... Uh, supply ship. Uh, industrial is going to be three industrials, which is mining. They're all, they always show up as mining. Um, and uh, trade is obviously three trade ships, and then the other two, uh, another trade expedition, and then balanced, which I don't know exactly what I would do there, but I'm thinking I would have an exploration ship, an industrial ship, and a trade ship, and then the other two. So we'd have all five of the ships uh, in that particular fleet. So uh, interesting enough, balanced expedition, and they're going to be variable light, uh, variable durations here. These are literal game minutes, okay? Literal game minutes. So however long you're playing, you might be able to complete all these. So this is where you select, and obviously I cannot select right now. Um, so I apologize that I can't demonstrate that for you. Uh, so I'm going to leave the navigator behind. I'm going to roll up here to my expeditions. So I happen to have put, uh, there's probably about seven of these rooms, uh, and this is the command room. This is what the command room looks like. So I have a, uh, a rack so you can sleep, uh, a desk so you can work, uh, no door, so uh, no hanky-panky. Uh, so step up, uh, fleet command station. Uh, it's going to uh, engage. We are fleet commander fur, love this one. Um, so debrief commander, so the expedition itself is done. Uh, this was a difficult rating of two stars. Uh, and you can go through this and watch everything that happens. So this was a uh, industrial, so mining was, was what this was. And uh, you can uh, A through all this, A button through all these. And some of these are really funny if you read them. Um, so deployed secondary mining crew of the rescue effort, uh, deep level crew drilled into a fault line triggering a seismic episode, tunnels collapsed, crew extracted with minor injuries. Uh, not funny, but, but if you read. So there was uh, some of them, 
Uh, there was one I read yesterday where somebody actually hijacked the ship. The ship went into auto mode, blasted up into space, and then opened all the airlock doors and ejected everybody. So that was kind of, that was kind of funny. Um, outran hostile ships. So if we look at that one, attacked by pirates while traversing Korvac space, outran hostile ships, but expended considerable fuel, diverted expedition to take on board additional fuel material. Blah, blah, blah. So a lot of um, these, and then finally end expedition, which will remove those ships. Uh, so this one, 61,000 units, uh, not too bad, and then clears out this uh, station. Uh, so we'll do the same thing here. Uh, I think, oh, wrong button, sorry. Uh, so debriefing the commander. Debrief you'll always get at the end of, of the debrief, so uh, they'll actually warp in. Uh, so I'm zooming through these. You can actually read a lot of these, and again, some of these are, are kind of uh, funny. So log entry, return to the fleet. That's always going to be the last assumed formation at capital ship, which is your freighter. Uh, so end expedition, which will clear those vessels out. There here was 160, 156. Now, here's Corvax Convergence Cube, a Tetra Cobalt, uh, which can yield you a bit of money. Now, here's one of the things, activated copper, a whole bunch of those, 95. Vortex Cube. Sac Venom. So all of these can, can yield you quite a bit on the market. Uh, let me go into my inventory and uh, We'll go over to the freighter. Im oh, sorry, freighter inventory. So all of these go into your freighter inventory. All of them go into your freighter inventory. So obviously the units go into your bank account. Not a big deal there. But all of these go into your freighter inventory. Why am I saying that three times in a row? Because if your freighter inventory is full, it will just kick you right out of this. They, you cannot complete the debrief unless there is room in your inventory. Now you can move all these anywhere you want to move them. Uh, I happen to be moving these over to my large cargo containers, which of course are spawned instances. What I mean by that is those cargo containers, you have 10 of them in the game. You can build them at any base that you have. They are shared. So the zero cargo container, cargo container zero, is always cargo container zero. And what I mean by that is that particular inventory is available to you wherever you build cargo container zero. It's always the same. Uh, and you can put materials in and out of that cargo container at any time, no matter where you are in the universe, uh, at least by my experience so far. So those are not locked. You can't, it, it doesn't matter how far away you are, anything like that. You can always get into uh, those inventories. So uh, the takeaway here is that all of these materials were from this expedition, and they will always go into the freighter inventory into the freighter inventory so make sure your freighter inventory does not fill up um, and for those who do not have 48 slots obviously you're going to have some challenges there so i keep all these valuable things here that i could use at any given time for trade all right fleet command station off to the next one uh, so I can actually get rid of some fleet command stations. This was my first station here, so this is always the first one to be used. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom through this uh, debrief commander. Uh, so they have covered 1,554 light years. Quite a zoom around. Uh, and again, I'm going to A through all of this, which is going to go fairly quickly. Return to home fleet assumed formation at the capital ship. Uh, and expedition. So uh, this is, I'm not going to go through this, obviously, uh, stuff that you can sell. I have a teleporter here. haven't managed to make the teleporters work. I don't know why that is, but oh well. Um, so uh, you see these, and, and again, I don't know exactly what this stuff is, and as I move forward, it, it does move, so I don't know what those are. Um, so my stations here, can't make the stations work. Don't know why, but they're not working. Haven't figured out how to put those particular numbers up and that sort of thing. 
So uh, one of the experimentations that I've done here is to figure out exactly how big. Uh, now I'm I'm center line here. There's the bridge. Uh, here's my way down to the uh, to the landing bays. Um, if you look over there to that bulkhead, uh, which I presume is the port side, and presuming the starboard side is actually the width of the uh, passages you can make. So this space is actually pretty big. And I have gone up above this space. I haven't done anything with it, just gone up to see how far it could go. I am six decks up there. So there's seven decks here. I don't know if you can go to 10 or not. I have no idea how tall uh, you can actually build in here. So uh, uh, I'm not doing that much. Obviously, I have this one room here that's the big, big room. Uh, the big room here that I kind of, uh, so the room actually, uh, let me go ahead and step forward here. The corridors here uh, changed a little bit. Uh, so this was actually the edge. So I'm about on the, so the bulkhead here would have been to my left. In this case, the forward bulkhead and the aft bulkhead. So it was a pretty good sized room. It was as wide as you see here. Um, so the only thing I changed was when I was going through and figuring stuff out, I actually uh, went forward a little bit. So uh, I am gonna change this area. What I wanna do is get all the command rooms next to each other now that I know how some of this functionality works. Uh, that way I can set up and say, okay, I need five command rooms. And I'll probably put in like six uh, because after all five ships, uh, so 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6, so reasonably I could run 6 expeditions simultaneously. They only give you 5, so you could really only run 5 five ship expeditions simultaneously, and you would leave, uh, well, technically 4 or 5 ships behind. Uh, so you really only need, if you're running full complement of ships every time, uh, then you could get by with uh, 25 ships means five uh, command rooms. Uh, so I will have six, and the reason I do six is I want uh, three port, three starboard, uh, which then makes that very, very simple. So that's what I'm going to do there. Uh, so my galactic trade terminal here, which I hardly ever use, my save game button there, uh, I have a refinery here. Uh, so when you need to do refining, uh, you can do that there. Uh, and there's the teleport thing over here, which I have not figured out how to make it work. I cannot make it work to save my life. So, save game. Always good to do a save game, so I conveniently have one of those there. And the only other thing that I want to put in while I'm here is a base computer. And I don't know if the base computer actually will do anything or not. Uh, so, in naval tradition, I'm going to try and put the base computer here over on the port side. So build menu is your up D button. And we're going over here to equipment, the portable devices. Unfortunately, the base computer is a portable device. And I have a couple of those uh, in stock already. Uh, chromatic metal is what you need to make one of those. Uh, so in this case, I want to put the base computer somewhere. I'm gonna put it right here next to the bulkhead, uh, kind of in the center so it looks a little bit uh, and I'm going to change my orientation so it's a little bit even there. So I'm going to put it right on the deck plates there and then A to place object. All right, so base computer uh, online. Uh, I'll get out of the build menu. Um, so it is calling this a an outpost. Uh, it is stating it's a habitable base. I don't know what really that means. Cartography, universal cartography fields, no prior claims. Uh, so I, I don't know if. Don't know what that means. Um, so I don't know if this is. Uh, all right, um, I'm going to go back in and uh, base register to current owner, uh, which is always a good thing. 
Space Station Terminus to teleport to the base at any time. I'm going to rename this, uh, and this is uh, uh, oh, let me let me try that again. The freighter is uh, KTC Shasta Kenti. Uh, for those of you who are actually curious how I come up with these names, uh, Shasta, yes, is a mountain in Northern California. Uh, but Shasta was actually the first big cat I worked with. It uh, was a cougar. Uh, Kenti was the first tiger I worked with, Bengal tiger. Uh, so anyway. Um, and we're going to call this base. Uh, in fact, we're going to call this uh, freighter base. Uh, just so uh, we know. Uh, and I'm not sure how to, I guess, uh, return. Uh, so when I steer away from this and then come back, it will have updated the name. So there we go, Shasta Kenti Freighter Base. Um, don't know how all of that works, but uh, anyway, I, I figured that's one of the things that I'm missing here, so I might as well put one in. So I have the same game, um, and off we go. So uh, I think that I have accomplished everything I meant to do. Uh, which is kind of how to set up um, your uh, frigates, uh, where the rooms actually come into play. This was the second one I built, the third one I built. Um, so all that sort of thing. So this is down to the other. Um, this is the up ladder going up to the upper decks. And like I said, I've got six decks up there. I do not know where it stops. Uh, I will probably do that off screen because I don't think that's really something that I want to bore everybody with. And it gets really, really laggy when I build um, just because of the sheer size of this particular base. So uh, having said that, I think this is Kenty Tiger signing off. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.